So you wanna know how to get more flexible. Well today we're gonna to teach you how to 10X your gains in 10X less time by diversifying your toolkit. We got 10 amazing mobility, flexibility, and everything in between drills that we're gonna show you that we've used to level up our flexibility in record time. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. All right, so, uh, Rad, how are you feeling today? Yeah, good. Yeah. I should say, if we haven't met before, my name is Yanni, this is Rad, we are Unity Gym. Behind the camera is Richard, and we're the gym that teaches people how to move and nourish instead of diet and exercise. Uh, we are in the sort of middle now of our seven key lessons that have caused the biggest breakthroughs in flexibility for us. Uh, as I said yesterday, we're going to go through these one by one. These are taken directly from our flexibility blueprint, which is linked in the video description. It's a free resource that you guys can download. It'll give you a head start. It's essentially a report that lists all of these seven key principles. And the videos that we're doing over the week are showing you how to take it out onto the gym floor and actually execute. So. Uh, I, hope you like, I hope you're liking this series. Uh, give us a shout out and uh, if you are enjoying it, smash up the like button. It'll help us grow and uh, get our message out there that health is about performance, not just body image. Um, what are we doing today, Rad? We're going to be well, doing... Well, you want to talk about these, uh, the ten, these 10 different types of stretching, Yeah, right? let's go through them quickly and, uh, and frame them. So we've listed, we just brain dumped a whole bunch of the different types of mobility and flexibility and stretching drills that we do and that we've learned over the years. And the first one is called active mobility. So active mobility is um, actually, I should go to number two first. These weren't actually put in an order that was uh, the way that I'd like to talk about them. Mobility is basically just taking your joint through its full range of motion. So anything where I try and stay as still as I can and move my shoulder through its full range of motion, that is mobility training, okay? And mobility so, is- So would you call a, like a, a deep squat a mobility mobility training? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm if just you, for argument's sake, I knew the answer you, to that, guys. If you go and wanna... sit down in a deep squat and spend some time there, and then absolutely. Yeah. If you hang, then that's mobility training. So anything that takes your joints through their full range of motion. Yep. Active mobility is when you're doing that with intentionally creating strength in that full range. So um, an example would of active mobility would be like, for example, maybe a Xiaoping where you're holding a weight yep. and you're taking your arm through that range or where you're holding onto the bands and you're, you know, so there's resistance and you're tensing your muscles as you go through full range of motion like yep. we're doing our warm up. Yep. Or a loaded Cossack squat um, where you go down as far as you can possibly go. So you're getting a stretch, but it's really active mobility because you're strengthening the muscles and creating active mobility. Yep. Yep. So the key, uh, I guess, the difference between uh, mobility training and active mobility training is that mobility training is just taking the joint through its full range of movement, whereas active mobility training is when you are applying some form of load to external it. Load, external yeah, load, yeah, to load create to tension it. in the muscle. Yeah. Yep. Um, the next one is myofascial release. You can take that one. Yeah, myofascial release is the easiest way to think of it, guys, is massage. It's, it's, uh, it's deep tissue massage where you're actually sort of warming up and lengthening the fascia that's like the honeycomb connective tissue in the muscle uh, body itself. Uh, and the idea is to soften and lengthen and um, there's a lot of benefits to myofascial release. Uh, you're also flushing chemical byproducts out of the tissues back through the lymphatic system. So um, the, 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 the obvious one is to go and get a deep tissue massage. Uh, and if you're in the gym doing it on your own, it is using, we use foam rollers and uh, rumble rollers for our myofascial release. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next one is trigger point release. You can take that one. Yeah, as trigger well. point release is similar to myofascial release, except that when we're wor we're we're usually working on um, cross sections of a variety of muscles. So a very very common 
trigger point release is in the, the front of the shoulder, the pec, where you've got the pec minor and the pec major and the, bi the long head of the bicep all coming in together into a junction. That area create is a really, really great area to do trigger point release because when it's tight, it can affect the shoulder and the shoulder junction, and that's the one we'll demonstrate when we go out onto the gym floor. And we use massage balls for trigger point release, and there are a variety of tools you can use. You can use a smooth ball, you can use a spiky ball, and you can even use a vibrating ball that we, uh, we've played with as well, which are amazing, and I'll link those in the description because they're freaking unreal. Then we've got dynamic stretching. Dynamic stretching is where you're basically doing uh, fast movements to take your joint through its full range of motion. So the, where I've used dynamic stretching mostly is when I did martial arts. So when you're doing um, lots of kicking movements and you're intentionally trying to keep your torso as still as possible but make your, you know, your hip joint go through a full range of movement uh, dynamically. Uh, dynamic means movement. Um, so it happens very, very quickly. Yep. Um, one, one uh, another example of that for anyone who's played any sort of team sport, whenever you see the guys warming up for a footy match or something and they're leaning against each other and swinging their legs from side to side, they're, they're dynamically stretching their adductors and their uh, glute complex. And then the other obvious one is forward and backwards for hamstring yeah, and hip yeah, flexor. And the ones where you see um, people like running along and then every couple of steps they raise their knee up to their chest and yep. they run along and raise the knee up to the chest. So that's yep. all da dynamic mobility. Same thing happens with um, you know the upper body. You see when people kind of do this kind of thing when they're down on the sports field or they're coming down to touch their toes like that, that's dynamic stretching. Yep. Uh, passive stretching is the one that most people know already that you can understand. Passive stretching is basically where you take your joint to its full range of motion with an external force being completely relaxed. Yep. So um, the, a really classic one is just that everybody knows is the, the splits. You know, if you go into the splits and you sit there, that's a passive stretch. Yep. Or if you reach forward to touch your toes and then hold it, that's a passive stretch. Yep. Um, the next one we've got is contract, relax stretching. So contract, relax is where you go into a stretch position and then you contract, excuse me, contract the muscles that you're trying to stretch and then relax them. So the way, a really common way to do contract, relax is where you do five reps of contract, relax. So um, an example would be, say if I go, if I do a 90-90 stretch here, so I'm trying to stretch my gluteals, and then from here, so the glutes are being stretched because the glutes act as an external rotator, so when they, uh, if the glutes, I mean they do a, a several things, but for what we're talking about here, the glutes act as an external rotator, so if I uh, contract my glute med here, it's going to pull my foot out to the side like that. So what I do here with contract relax is, I'm going to try and drive my foot down into my knee whilst I try and lift my knee up. And what that does is that contracts the glute and I hold that for five seconds and then I relax. And we, we like to do contract relax with an external load. So I'd have a weight here that's pushing my knee down to get a deeper stretch. And by doing that, each time you contract the muscle, you create fatigue. And a fatigued muscle is uh, harder to tense to create force, which means it, it goes into the stretch easier. Um, so I hope that makes sense. So if your muscles are fresh and they can resist the stretch, they can stop you going deeper in it. But when you've contracted it or like say you've just done a set of weightlifting, for example, and that muscle's fatigued, it's going to be easier to go into a stretch straight after. So that's what contract relax does. Yep. Next one is uh, progressive loaded mobility. So this is one um, this is where you're doing, uh, it's similar in the sense to what we call active mobility, but you're progressively trying to go deeper um, over each set that you do and over the weeks and months with your periodization. So a really good example of something that we like to use is a um, loaded hamstring stretch, which is basically just a good morning. If you know what a good, uh, not a good, good morning, Romanian a Romanian deadlift. deadlift. Straight leg Romanian deadlift. Straight leg yeah. Romanian deadlift. So your, your knees are completely locked out straight. You fully hyperextend the back and you hold a load in your hands so that when you go down, the load pulls you down so it's a loaded stretch and then you'll hold it for, we like to do 30 seconds or so. And it is 
full on on the hamstrings. It's probably one of the most effective stretches I've ever, or mobility exercises I've ever done on the hamstrings. And then you'll come up and you'll take a break, do something else, and then come back and do another set. And each set that you do, you're progressively going deeper and you can also progressively add more weight to it. So that's why we call it progressive. So progressive loaded mobility is probably one of the more advanced. And I like the 10 deep breaths rule, yeah. um, which is that rather than trying to count a number of time, you count 10 big, deep diaphragmatic breaths whilst you're in the stretch and with every exhale, you're really, really uh, allowing your body or pulling your body into it even yeah, more. Yeah. Um, that just works really well because you're also combining the breathing technique. Yeah. We also do it, another really good, um, uh, they, they, so all of these techniques don't work for every muscle and for every joint. There's yeah. some work better for certain joints and like we're, we're going to talk about that in a okay, sec right, yeah yep. yep. so uh and then the number nine we've got we've just got two more to go through number nine functional range conditioning so this is um this is something that's created it's very very new um from, from my understanding because the guy that's created it is uh he's all over the internet and so are his his pupils or disciples his name's dr Andre Ospina, and he is, I'm pretty sure he's an American dude. Um, he's a chiropractor, um, as far as I know. And the idea of functional range conditioning is that you're basically um, taking your joint to its full range of motion. And then you, th there's a bunch of things that he does, but the one that people understand uh, mostly is, prog is, is pales and rails, which is, um, I always forget this. It's um, progressive angular isometric load and regressive angular isometric load. So the rails is when, so let's say if I'm doing my glutes again. So when I would do rails is, and I've, you've got to excuse me for this. If there's any FRC guys that are out there that are, that, uh, are going to be sticklers for what I'm about to say, I haven't actually done the FRC course. I've learned a lot through training with people online and through people that have done the FRC course coming into the gym and teaching me. So if I get this wrong, I know that what, what I'm about to say, one of them is pales and one of them is rails, and I, and I can never remember. Um, but I'm pretty sure that, that the, in this case here, the regressive angular load means that I'm trying to regress the angle. So what I'm doing is I'm going to create tension by pushing down and tensing that glutes, and I hold it for 10 seconds, but I tense every single muscle that I can that are around that joint. And then the, the pales, the progressive, is when I remove the foot and then I try to pull this foot towards me. So now in this case, I'm tensing the adductors to try and pull my foot up. And the idea is that um, when you, you use this principle called irradiation where um, all of the muscles that are around, so in this case it would be every muscle in my thigh, in my core, or everything that's around the glutes and the adductors tenses with the idea that when you create movement, it's not ever isolated to one muscle group. You, you can never really truly isolate one muscle group. There's always muscle groups in all the joints around it that are working, and that's the idea with the um, FRC. That's a really layman description of that, by the yeah. way, but yeah. we're, we're, only, we're doing a video on 10 principles here. So, And then the last one we're gonna talk about, or that we're talking about today, is called Moyle's Maximum Overcoming Isometric Load, and that's an idea where you have resistance that prevents you from being able to move you go to your full range of motion uh, so the example would be with the shoulders if I go to full external uh, rotation and I have a load like if I'm lying face down so I can't lift my arms and I try to lift them uh, and then I remove the load and then I can lift it and I do it explosively so again those are some really 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 quick brief explanations of some very complex and very in-depth uh, methods. Methods. But the message that we're trying to drive home today, and uh, I, I would like, and what I was sort of planning to do in, in my perfect utopian universe was to get out on the gym floor and demonstrate each of these, but I realize now that we're not going to have time to do that today because there's so much to talk about, but what we can do is definitely do a show demonstrating one of them no, each we can, time. We can do a know? show on each one. Yeah, I mean, on each one, because there's more, there's, there's more, um, there's more to it than just quickly going out. Like to demonstrate all 10 of these properly, it's gonna take a little bit of time. So yeah, that'll, probably I'll let actually, that'll probably actually be a really good idea because then we can do, <clears throat> we can just do a whole show on, on FRC and explain it. Yeah, that's it exactly and, right, yeah. Uh, so, but what, what I'm trying to get, the, the message I'm trying to drive home today is that to increase to, to get to get flexible the right way you have to diversify your toolkit and <coughs> this is it's really important to understand because a lot of people you know uh 
they a lot of people fail to get flexible and, and and it turns them off they try they think oh, I'm tight and I like the amount of times I've had someone say I've just got genetically tight hamstrings I can't get them flexible I've tried to stretch them and it doesn't work for me you know I've even had physiotherapists tell me I got friends who are physiotherapists who have said that person just has really tight hamstrings it's his anatomy he's he's never going to get them now i've only ever once met a person who was a client who came here and worked with us for a while who actually had a physiological um he was compromised physically and his quad he was born with shorter quadriceps which meant that he no matter how hard we banged against it he actually needed to have an operation to get the um to get his knees adjusted so that he could get length in his quadriceps that's one in thousands of people that I've worked with, yeah, you know. I think the big mistake is when I, I, I don't think that, and I'm not going to say, I'm not saying this is, this is what it is. I'm saying my opinion. I think it's a big cop out to say that you've got genetics that prevent your muscles from lengthening because the muscles are malleable. The yeah. muscles, they absolutely can lengthen. You can have joint restrictions, but that's totally different yeah. to muscles. So I've got something called... Um, FAI hip, which is femoral acetibular impingement, which prevents me from getting good internal rotation, and it also, uh, That's you know, acetabular. It's acetabular, yeah, femoral acetabular impingement, and um, so you can have joint issues, but I, I don't think you can have genetically tight yeah. muscles. And I think al that's just although a joint out. issues are, are common. When you look at a broader um, in, um, uh, 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 community, they're very uncommon when you look at like the amount of people in a gym. Yeah, you know, like but if it's you've not got just that, I think if you talk about if you want to start going down the the road of all oh, the, these issues and this and that. I don't think I've ever met a person that doesn't have an issue, an issue in their body. Yeah. Everybody's got issues. Yeah. Like we've trained some of the best athletes in the country in Australia in our gym and they've all got issues. Yeah. But there's people that overcome their issues and there's people that let their issues define them. Yeah, absolutely. And that's who you are. I mean, I've got fucking some of the worst issues going on in my body, yeah. yet I'm somebody that, uh, that, that the average punter looks at as being in a yeah. superhuman yeah. world, you know. It's very interesting that you bring that up because they did a study recently on athletes who went to one of the recent Olympic Games. Uh, I can't remember if it was, it was one of the last three Olympic Games. You can look this study up and they checked their spine and 60, over 60%, I think it was 63 or 64% of the athletes, of the thousand athletes <coughs> that they did MRIs on had massive disc bulges. The type of disc bulges that you that that a lot of people would be seeking physiotherapy and all this sort of stuff for, yeah. you know, and thinking, oh, I'm fucked. I've got disc bulges. I shouldn't be exercising. These were Olympic level athletes who had made it to the Olympics. Now, what I'm not trying to say here um, that Olympians like compromise their bodies to make it to their sport. Most of them had no fucking clue that they had disc bulges that you know could cause them issues and things mm -hmm. like that, you know. Uh, I, I, so my, the, the reason I'm sharing that is that we, I, I've said this before and Rad hates me using this word, we catastrophize our, our, um, our issues and nuances way too much, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and if we can bring this back onto topic, there is no reason why the average person can't, the average punter can't massively level up both their strength and flexibility. And if you do it the right way, you won't compromise strength. If you diversify your toolkit and you understand that there is so many different ways to skin a cat and just banging away trying to put your leg on a fucking elevated chair to lengthen your hamstrings, it's not the way that you're going to get there. Or, you know? or saying, um, I've been stretching for years and I don't get anywhere. And when you look at the stretching that people do, they do a static stretch and hold it for 15 seconds. Yeah. And they do a couple of the most basic stretches that we all learned back at high school for like five minutes at the end of their run. And they yeah. say that, and they think that that's a stretch. Yeah, like it's ridiculous. Right. So y yeah, you have to, to bring it back on point, not only do you have to diversify your toolkit, but then you have to f come up with a plan of how you're going to use that. Don't like, go too far in this because this is tomorrow's okay, show. Okay, well, there you yeah. go. Right. So there you <laughs> what, go. How we, are we going for time? There you go. We've got three minutes left. So we've but, got a whole show coming up tomorrow about how you put this together yeah. in a plan. So two, two, um, two of the, ne the, the last, the final three um, uh, topics that we're going to talk about is how to systemize your stretching and, and, and how to turn your stretching into a workout.
Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one is passion leads to progress, which is a mindset thing that I want to talk about as well. But um, these are all very important. We're really putting the icing on the cake now, guys, as far as this whole flexibility blueprint concept goes. Uh, I really hope that you, um, if you're only tuning in for the first time today, make sure that you watch uh, all of the shows uh, over the last sev several days. Uh, I know Monday was off topic, but the majority of the shows over the last week have been about how to get more flexible, and these all tie into our flexibility blueprint provides a really practical application for the blueprint that we've uh, got to download. And uh, this is what a lot of people are asking for. A lot of people are asking for, oh, well, the blueprint's just a report. How do we actually um, execute this? Well, now you have everything you need. Uh, and today's um, episode, we were gonna go out on the gym floor. So for anyone who was expecting that, I'm sorry, but I realized getting into this that there's just so much to cover in each of these 10 tools that we use and it wouldn't do it justice if we weren't able to demonstrate them each properly. So as a bonus, we're gonna turn that into 10 shows and we're gonna take you out on the gym floor and really show you how to execute, execute every single one of these tools. Uh, remember, if you haven't downloaded that flexibility blueprint, it's, it's, um, the, the link is in the description of this video. Uh, it, is, it is super, super beneficial that you understand all of these lessons that we've learned uh, because they've all gone into how we created the foundation movement system. Uh, I'm gonna do a shameless plug here. If you want someone to walk you through this, and tell you exactly what you should be doing and when, and to have access to us and our inner circle tribe of amazing people who are all leveling up their strength, flexibility, and athleticism, then I urge you to jump on our Foundation Movement System online program. That's yeah. it. Have a great day. Happy Hump tomorrow. Day. This is Wednesday in Sydney signing out. See you tomorrow. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.